Republican Congressman Paul Ryan. He is, as you know, chairman of the House Budget Committee. Congressman Ryan, good morning. Good morning, Charlie Erica. How are you doing this morning? You have a prediction for Michigan? Uh, no, I don't. I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in the predicting business either. Uh, no, let me go to the question of what is being debated there. It seems more about social issues than economic issues. Is that troubling for you and the Republican Party? It's not troubling for me, and I actually I think that's more about the media and maybe the Democrats who are trying to move it in that direction. I think what these candidates are mostly talking about are the fiscal issues, the economic issues, and the choice of two futures that the country is going to have to make in the fall. And when it all comes down to it, I think we're going to be really talking about the economic issues, which are the driving issues of, of, of the front of the minds of the American people. And so I don't think we're going to have a sidetrack into social issues. Um, there are issues that arise that, that must be discussed, like the president's new mandate um, that affects Catholic churches and Catholic hospitals and things like that. But by and large, this is going to be about economic issues, I think. Uh, and the bailout, should that be an issue? And should uh, the voters look at Governor sure. Romney and Governor Santorum and say, we had an economic bailout of the auto companies and look what happened. Profits are up and they're both uh, doing well. Well, if you give any company tens of billions of dollars and wipe their debt off the books, I, I would expect them to do well. Uh, I don't think there's a difference in their positions, if I'm not mistaken, Charlie, between um, Rick and Mitt on that issue. So uh, I don't see that as a They're both against issue that the goes beyond Michigan. Yeah, I think it's a big issue in Michigan. I'm not sure that it's a big issue in the rest of the country. Look, in my hometown of Janesville and Kenosha that I represent, we lost our auto plants. So where we come from in auto country, we don't see them as great success stories because we had plant shutdowns irrespective of those bailouts. Uh, sir, when you look at the plans of the different candidates who are out there, but perhaps most specifically Santorum and Romney, is there one that sticks out to you as the best economic plan for this country? Well, you know, look, I think Romney came out with a great tax plan just the other day at Ford Field on Friday. I think that was a really excellent pro-growth tax plan. Both of them have been talking about fundamental entitlement reform, which is critical to getting this debt crisis averted, to making sure that we can keep promises to seniors. And I think what matters is, are they doing to do the right thing, get the economy growing, and get this debt crisis averted? They've been fantastic on spending. They've been fantastic on entitlements. And they're now advancing really good pro-growth economic policies. So as far as I'm concerned, no matter who emerges from this primary season, which might take a while, we're going to have a sharp contrast about what it takes to get this country growing and about reclaiming American exceptionalism with the president. And I, I'm comfortable with the direction that both these campaigns are headed. So you believe, though, just to sum up, that either one of those campaigns would avoid uh, what you see as the, the possibility of a European-style uh, debt crisis and, and yes. potentially austerity measures? You believe the economy I am. I, am. I, know these, I know these gentlemen well. I've talked to them at great length about these issues. And I do believe either one of them are very well poised and ready to provide the kind of leadership that's been lacking for the last three and a half years to tackle our debt crisis. And I do think they're ready to do that. Uh, do you also believe that the economy beginning to uh, improve and that that's good news for President Obama? Sure. I mean, it's good news for Americans, first of all. Let's, let's not read politics into all of these things. But what we've also seen is a lot of people are just leaving the workforce. They're not even trying to find jobs anymore. So we still have 20 million people out of work. We still have huge challenges ahead, Charlie. We have a massive debt that will surely doom our economy in the near future if we don't get it under control. So I don't think we should be taking a big pause when there's so much work yet to do. But it's always good when you can see some signs of economic vitality. It tells me that there's a great resiliency in American businesses and small businesses. And imagine how well we could grow if we got the government out of their way. Yeah. Let me talk just one question about foreign policy. There is a growing sentiment things are going from bad to worse in Afghanistan. Do you sense among Republicans uh, and your fellow Congress people, both Democratic and Republican, more talk about we have got to get out of there faster than we expected? Not, I was there in December. Uh, I met with, with the commanding generals and, and, and looked at what was going on on the ground. And there's a concern that propping up this central government isn't going to work, but that there are things we can do with special forces. We call it village stability operations that have been really successful. So the question is, is can we make sure that Afghanistan never becomes a safe haven for terrorists in the future? And I think with a very limited footprint, we can do that. The question is, can we keep this kind of huge troop and money investment um, to try and make this government succeed? That's where there's a big debate about. Mm. But I do believe we can have, with a limited commitment of American people and resources, the ability to prevent it from becoming a safe haven. The question really kind of goes over to Pakistan, which is another conversation. 
Um, that's where a big debate occurs. But, but there is a debate about whether or not full success is seen as this government succeeding or yeah. that the place is pacified and it's not becoming a safe haven for the Taliban and al-Qaeda. And that, I think, mm -hmm. is an objective we clearly can and must yeah. achieve. Congressman Ryan, thank you very much for joining us. You bet, Charlie. Take care.